We have three presenters, um, and I'm going to introduce each of them. So firstly, um, someone who's been working on koha for a very long time and was at the 2010 koha con is Tarasat Shapi Ola. He is an experienced professional with more than 18 years of work experience and proven in managing and leading university libraries, special libraries and community libraries. He is passionate about volunteer support towards LAS professionals and has successfully conducted many sessions in library automation, open source and free ILS tools. He's really passionate about seeing those adopted in libraries and he puts in a lot of his own time to make it happen. He's been working with Pakistan Library Automation since the year 2000 and has special skills in, in library data conversion from non-marked Mark 21 using different tools and um, has had a few international publications and conference presentations on these topics. Now joining Farasat we have two other people, excuse the rustling, I'll get my bits of paper in order. Um, so we have Saima Kutab who is a PhD student of Information Systems at the University of Auckland. Saima is investigating the governance mechanisms for sustainable crowdsourcing practices in the GLAM sector. And thirdly, we have Asif Wahid, and Asif is a librarian with the Government Punjab Public Library, established in Lahore, Pakistan in 1884. He's been there since 2007. He's an expert in various integrated library systems and was instrumental in the library's 2018 Koha migration, a project that included approximately 204,000 bibliographic records in Arabic, English, Persian and Urdu. So let me just see if we're going to be ready to go with our um, people online. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Farasa Shafiullah and uh, thank you for your patience and sorry for that um, technical hiccup. So today I will be talking through um, the Koha timeline in Pakistan. So what went well and what went wrong and how it is impacting our um, LIS market. So it is just a, a very short um, snapshot of um, my country. So we are in South Asia they bring uh, China, Iran, and uh, Afghanistan. And uh, coming to our topic, so Koha actually have uh, many um, background aspects why um, this initiative was started by the professionals. So one, one was that in 2000, our uh, traditional university grant commission was um, changed to the HEC to uh, Change the table in our university from 100 to um, to, uh, to 200. So to look in how our HEC, uh, how our higher education will look like. So you, you so our HEC initiative in 2000 was to add more number uh, in the universities uh, in the existing table of 100. And uh, the second point was that international ranking and quality assurance units in each university was introduced to actually um, put a competition among the universities and have a quality education, which will result in consortia development and institutional repositories and web presence of academic and other libraries. From 2015 and 18, Pakistan universities start coming up on the international um, ranking, um, on, on international ranking like QS and uh, Times Higher Education. So that basically help us in a way that universities look how libraries should be look like and library services. So how this all HEC um, impacted our library sector was that with the introduction of HEC Digital Library, that was the first of its kind of consortium for library uh, sector, especially our academic libraries since the university table reached from 100 to 100 plus and um, that basically bring that in the second thing was that pla which is our national association they were struggling with the traditional software uh, it's called uh, lamp due to the 2k issue in, um, in the programming so that time pakistan library automation group park lab they started to support the libraries with the Microsoft Access Grade system, which is called LIMS, which was a non mark uh, system, but it was doing a day-to-day -day, um, 
those all uh, functions. So if we look on the software's timeline in Pakistan, so in 1985, it started with micro and mini CDICs, which was both Pascal and Fortran. And then InMagic came, which was a priced software, and then LAMP, which was developed by the Netherlands um, Library Corporation. So it was a project between um, uh, PLA and Netherlands Library Developed Projects. But after that, then UNESCO introduced its Winices, and Windows was also developing, so it goes to Windows 3 to 9, uh, Windows 95. So then LIMS came in 2000, and uh, by the time our HCC, as, was, as I was talking, that it was changed from UGC to HCC. So Greenstone was uh, introduced as a free software, but then people look on how standardized database um, library data can be shared. So Mark, Edit, and Zebra was used to use uh, their data for a library of Congress Gateway. But then in uh, 2006, when when Koha was uh, on Windows 226, that time we started, and I was one of the member with the uh, with the Park Lab to start. And now we end up in having the Koha on cloud by uh, Apostic, which is one of our scientific uh, uh, such organization, and it's now also have an option of uh, free and pay for support. So what factors actually contributed in OSS adoption? As I said, one was the 2K bug, which was um, actually uh, stopping the lamp to work on work on the new systems, and it was not taking the year 2001 in, in the system. The second was that UGC come to the HEC, and they were asking universities to adapt modern technologies and approaches for the education. The third one was that also they introduced the private universities charter, which um, start another uh, com competition among the universities. And the third and and the another one was that Pakistan also start uh, putting money on ICT and mobile sector expansion, which definitely helped the universities to connect on the fiber. So they start video conferencing facilities and their HCC digital library um, service for the consortia for um, online resources. And also at the same time, our um, ICT initiative by the communities of practice, like the volunteer group, Arclag, at that time, they started uh, helping people from LEMP to WinICES and to LIMS, their data so that they have a data to be able to convert in the standardized format. And looking on their practice, the other small groups came like LIPCO, LA Solution, PLW, PLC, and uh, full stack. Below, that the graph which I show that shows how, how this dominate our uh, market now. So in if we look on the other uh, OSS initiatives for the libraries, so UNESCO, Mini and Micro CDI says Greenstone was from the New Zealand and uh, Zebra and Gas, yes, uh, as I mentioned, is about from uh, it's a free source to put the data on Z3950 and Parkland also introduced a digital uh, library software. DSpace was in the market and ePrint. Looking on all this background that how we started was basically the change in the higher education sector and then the competition and uh, a, a more uh, emphasis on uh, ICT infra infrastructure capability, so things coming up and then library professionals, they start taking part in uh, and approving, improving their services. So current significant COHA implementation, if you look in Pakistan, that it uh, has a popularity as ILS, and we did a small survey only to the users who have OPEX, and they are on the COHA for, for like last five, six years, so they have a good experience to tell that what they have. And uh, it will be very um, surprising news that in whole Pakistan, only one university is using a priced uh, international uh, provider is, is Bywater, is IBA Karachi. All other uh, implementations and sports are done by the local and volunteers. Current sustainable uh, and government support initiative done by Pastic, which is the, which is a cloud Koha. And I spoke to them, they said now they, they have more than 
one, 148 libraries on that cloud. So any university, government institution, they can join that one free. And uh, as a volunteer, the ideal uh, implementation done in NUST, um, it was started uh, back when I came in cohort con, uh, 10, and now they have all their 16 libraries on uh, their main server. And you can see the number of items now is uh, 400, uh, four, 413,293 items. So it's, it's really a big number for, for a core implementation. In Pakistan, it is a ranked university, and uh, they have um, off, uh, they have a different campus in different cities. So this was the um, operating system wise, our survey result. So if you look still, Koha people are uh, using in operating system wise, still people are have a Windows application, which they, uh, they, I, they have not migrated yet to the Linux, but 24 out of uh, 28, 24, uh, they have uh, Linux implementation. And uh, they mentioned about, so we asked them how, how it was, whether it was a local server or whether it was the uh, cloud. So now 14 have the local servers. And if you see the installation mostly done by the library staff, but if you uh, go back on, on, on the last one, it is uh, using clouds, it is picking up since it is a free and it's government supported. So they are now coming on, on that one. This, the second the statistics, which was really, uh, interesting in, in a sense of uh, maximum utilization of a software as ILS. So you can see that all the libraries who are using Koha in Pakistan, they are mostly uh, doing cataloging and circulation pattern management, or and multiple libraries. Otherwise acquisition, serials, or really on a very low side, plus reports, they are not generating much reports uh, from the system. Probably it's the, the depend on all the free um, service. So if, if we look at what the opportunities they get through uh, this, um, main, main installing and maintaining Koha, so 79% people think that it is a self-learning and they are maintaining it that way. 71% uh, they said that we get the opportunity of training, so that's why we adopted that one. And 57% they said that they get a um, support from IT to maintain it. And 46% they are saying that they are getting from uh, help from Koha community and all other um, their peer learning. And 43% uh, is support from the volunteer. And from parent organization is the lowest one, which is 32% probably is it's uh, one of the reasons that still adaptability is not on the pace where it should be. So the key challenges when we asked them, it, it was uh, that how they feel uh, to be part of being a user of Koha. They said organization challenges are there. 50% people, they feel that administration cooperation and budgeting still uh, to bring the things to uh, run it successfully. Migration challenges are, are there. They have heaps of training, but so they feel that data conversion is, is um, still a point for them. Customization and local language. And uh, library staff training and experience sharing is the, the 39%. And difficulty in uh, upgrading, especially when uh, Linux is upgrading or the patch is coming, they still um, are not very comfortable on doing. So 39% is, is the, uh, they feel that it's difficult and uh, for developing a strategy for long term that um, connecting the Koha with the other softwares going for the uh, discovery tool so they feel it's, it's still a challenge for them and uh, system they think it's a system limitation in a sense of Linux is not very common so they have to have uh, that comparably look and plus the other systems in the universities, they are mostly window based. So the compatibility with window Linux still remain a challenge and uh, they are trying to maintain their visibility on the social media, but the feeling is that it's opaque, it's not much um, kind of um, compatible with the way they use the social media for their universities and institute. 
they have less enforced support from IT, many, many people complain it's 25%. Outsourcing or external assistance is expensive. Budget is always it's a developing country, so they, they feel that budget is really um, tight for them. And uh, when it's coming up, the setting up and installation, since it's a Linux, that was the one of uh, the issue. And um, local support is also either it's limited available or if it is available, then it, it has more cost as per their expectation. So the point why we, why we uh, touch all these people was that we want to see the Koha in Pakistan was introduced back in 2005 when discussion started on our email group, that HEC having initiative. And then from 2006, window was uh, window uh, Koha was st was start using uh, different libraries, and I sh I did one um, Koha implementation in Windows in our legislative legislative libraries, which I presented in Koha Con 10, and uh, after that we were thinking that probably now this is a good time people will have an example and they will go very fast on that. But then Koha community stopped on Windows and they shifted to the Linux. So that becomes a big challenge. We try to bridge the gap, but still we more focus on, on the Koha side rather than on the Linux implementation. So the things which we feel that it's, it's uh, we have hundreds of formal trainings by different communities of practices, with different volunteer groups, different providers who are doing volunteer work. Uh, but these things are related to only with the installation and basic modules and data conversions. Nothing more than that. Lack of training on the strategic planning, like looking when they're migrating, how much time it will take and how they have to migrate all their data and how they can uh, make it compatible with their student system or with their other uh, systems like Moodle or other learning system. That they still lack that how they can do that one and they look towards to the um, volunteer groups, which they are only working on the way they how they can bring the Koha in. The other things which we say that strategy uh, is, is the strategic and business challenges that the people start adopting because it's becoming word of mouth. People are sharing the things on social media, but they are not actually planning in a well and well in time so that they can uh, sustain it. Same way they're planning uh, as weak organizational assessment, they, they just adopt it, but then they realize that, oh, they have to look for the compatibility fretting system with the other uh, systems in, in the university for the learning and teaching. So budgeting becomes another um, challenge for them because they have less staffing. Uh, so they have uh, issues on uh, staffing uh, for uh, training and coordinating. And also they lack uh, sustainable planning and, and that if a new version will come or if another uh, operating system is coming or if, if another uh, software is coming for uh, uh, discovery, so how they will be uh, going to uh, use the same Koha data and same platform for that. So technically, um, OSS was, uh, people are familiar with, you know, with Ubuntu is more than, than the Debian and uh, they still de depend on seeking support from um, from the other people rather than they try to develop their own staff and their own interpersonal skills. They also have a challenge in ability to convince the institutional administration for OSS transition because it's a kind of uh, something that other all systems are uh, on Windows and you want to bring the things on the Linux. So it's kind of uh, a trust and, and the training. And they also have a trust issue between IT teams and library administrators is, is that they try to use the things which easy go on Windows, but they don't want to take the things which they have to then learn for the Linux and doing those four things. And uh, when something happened or down times, they lose data and they look that what now they have nothing in their hands. So this, these are these are the main challenges people feel, and um, and and still, Koha is, is really a popular um, and the option only option available to these countries to adopt for if they're looking for a standardized database. In the whole country, if we look on the landscape of ILS, so we, we have probably less than ten uh, users of. Um, 
uh, this one, they won one of the proprietary softwares. And uh, then uh, I think it's only one university uh, is on um, CC Dynex. And um, the less than 10 universities are on uh, Virtua, which is probably taken over another university. But all other universities, either they are on Koha or they are, are using their in house. So this is the whole from my side. And thank you for, for the time and listening to me. If any questions, I'm happy to answer.